Hello, I'm Gustavo Velasquez, the lead actor in Conversations in LA. And I'm Anne Marie Cummings, the creator, writer, director, and one of the actors in Conversations in LA. So we got seven <laughs> questions for you today. First question, how did you get your start in the entertainment industry? Well, my story is not traditional. I went to college for accounting, studied for four years, eight hours a day in my room. I always wanted to be an artist, but I never got the chance to. My family was very traditional. They wanted to really explore education. But I remember being in middle school doing a talent show and singing Tupac Changes and being on stage <laughs> and just, I don't know, I felt this energy. Towards my last year of college, I got blessed and had opportunities to work for the top four firms in the audit industry. But I, didn't take that. I rejected two of the offers and decided I wanted to be an artist. I gave everything I could, started taking every acting class I could, and at the end of my first year, I met Anne-Marie and started my journey in conversations in LA. So how did I get my start? Well, um, that is a threefold question for me since I'm an actor, writer, and director. I'll start with the writing. So I grew up around a writer. My dad is a writer. So Probably around the age of five, I began writing journals, expressing my feelings on the page. As an actress, um, I also started at a pretty young age, but uh, it was around the age of 15 that I remember reading in the newspaper that there were auditions uh, for the Diary of Anne Frank. So I took myself and didn't even tell my family, didn't tell any friends, took myself to the audition uh, audition for Anne and got it so that was exciting and I think that was a turning point for me and then as a director when I was living in New York I had a play that was off-Broadway and then I began having readings of plays at off-Broadway theater companies and so I started directing my own work I mean just to go off of that I mean her entrepreneur skills is really what's making this project happen so we're lucky to have you on thank it. you so can you tell us about Conversations in LA? Well, this is very anti-Hollywood because this is an older white woman going through a middle-aged crisis, meeting a young Hispanic millennial. That storyline has not really been seen and we're adding a gay couple. We have an older gay man who's married meeting a young, handsome gay man. So we're, and we're, there's a lot of minorities in this. It's very different, but very exciting because they're talking about real relationships, what's really going on in this. And it's very exciting. Right. And I would just add to that in terms of the writing itself, you know, what I was interested in exploring was this story about two people who make the decision to fall in love, who stay in this relationship, despite the fact that it is an older woman and a younger man. And you know, this, there is still this taboo around this type of relationship. Um, but it's also a little bit of a class relationship too, um, which you learn more about in season two. But, um, you know, it's, it's about how two people decide to stay together regardless of what people on the outside think, regardless of the family, regardless of friends. They feel they're in love, they're in love, and they go for it. Of course, and I think a lot of people can relate to that type of topic, which makes it exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. So can you tell us about your character? So I play Gus Barrero. He's young, millennial, Hispanic, extremely passionate. His, he's an emotional roller coaster. He hasn't learned how to tap his emotions yet, so he's very passionate. He's expressive. He knows what he wants, and he goes after it. But he's also in a journey right now. He wants to break free. He, he has thoughts. He's a thinker. He wants to express himself, but he has family obligations that are holding him back. So it's very exciting. A lot of uh, just layers to this character. Right. And as also, I'll just add, as a young guy, he's had a lot of sex and he's had a lot of, you know, these sort of quick flings, but he's never been in love before, which is why I think this yeah. is a unique relationship. Um, my character, Michelle McAbee, she's the protagonist. She is single. She's menopausal and moody. She is <clears throat> having her midlife crisis, which is that period in her life when she's trying to figure out what she wants to do with the rest of her life, what makes her feel alive, what risks does she want to take. Um, and she is uh, not looking for a relationship, um, but then she meets... Gus Barrero and he it's definitely a soul connection that they have so he sparks something in her and um, she's 
willing to, as vulnerable as she feels, she's willing to give it a shot. And in the pilot alone, you'll see what that soul connection is about because at the end of the day, it's not superficial. Real love, I, I think, goes way deeper than that. So moving on, uh, how is this project different from anything you worked on in the past? Well, like I mentioned, I am brand new. This is my first debut project. Uh, and we'll mention we got three Emmy no daytime Emmy nominations for a digital drama series. So it's exciting to be working on this kind of caliber of project. I think what makes it different from things I see on TV is that this is one take format. There are no cuts. I mean, that needs to be emphasized. No cuts. Once the camera starts, it does not stop. So what does that entail? A lot of rehearsals. We have about 10 rehearsals for the actors in one month before we bring in the cinematographer. Once he comes in, we have about five more camera rehearsals. Then it's a dance. Literally, uh, it's just like a Spanish dance, a <laughs> flamingo. It, it's just the actors moving with the cinematographer, moving with the director, and just a marriage of this to really master this one-take art form. So for me, this is, I would say, an expression of just about everything that I have done in my life up until this point. Um, you know, having been a stage actress for so long and definitely having had the wonderful opportunity of working on two-handers, which are <clears throat> two-person plays, where you're up there for two hours straight. You know, there really is nothing like that experience where you get to be on stage for that length of time. From the moment that, you know, the curtains rise, you are in character. And so what I was thinking when I created this style, which I found in the process of doing this, was, you know, I really want to give the actor this opportunity where when we start, we just keep going. And um, it allows actors to go deeper into the work. Uh, so it's pretty exciting for me. Um, I've never done anything like this before. I have never written episodic work. Um, I've spent my entire life in the theater, so this is just like a kid in a candy store. You know, I'm really exploring with the camera, I'm exploring with the actors, I'm pushing all the kind of boundaries that I can with this one particular style of one-shot episodes. And even for the actors, this is really uh, like a playground. I mean, we have the luxury of rehearsal, of time, and we get to really dive into what these characters are about. Anything for any actor who goes through it, it touches them. We have a lot of seasoned actors in season two, which I can't reveal, but they love it. it this is a really, really exceptional series. Um, so when and where can fans catch the premiere, season one and season two, we are excited that it's going to be on Amazon and iTunes September 13th. In the UK, in the United States, Australia and Canada. So save the date, this is going to be really exciting to 9 13. watch. 9-13. <laughs> and um, when and where can fans, uh, <laughs> sorry I'm reading questions wrong, do you have any other upcoming projects? Uh, this is pretty much my main focus right now. I'm the lead actor in it, so it's full steam ahead. All my energy is going into this. It's tunnel vision. We're wrapping up season two, and we have some big things in the work that we cannot talk about yet, but it's getting excited. And for me, um, I am focusing 100% on this, and I would just say on the periphery, my first feature, it's a culinary romantic comedy, has been picked up by director Wendy Stanzler. And I'm very excited about that, Wendy. Um, you probably would know her work from Sex and the City. She's been a director on recently Orange is the New Black and Mozart is the New it, Mozart in the Jungle. Right. Yeah. Um, so I'm just excited to have Wendy on board. Yeah, and I've read that script, and it's absolutely thank you amazing. Thank you. Well, well deserved. Uh, and where can you find us on social media? You can find me on Instagram and Twitter on Gustavo underscore. V27. And you can find me on Facebook at Conversations in LA and Anne Marie Cummings, and on Twitter at Conversations in LA at Converse in LA and Anne Marie Cummings at Immediate Vision. And if you're just looking for something on the side about me, some fun stuff, I have a Pinterest page. So thanks, guys. We hope you liked all the questions and we look forward to talking to you soon. Thank you. September so 13th. Woo! Thanks, guys. Talk soon.